But I was thinking about that weekend, and I was thinking, where we're going down to the, the beach, and they said we're going to have a, we're going to have a, like a, it was dark, and we're going to have like a campfire. I thought this was great, we'll have a, a campfire, and I'm used for campfires, yeah, camps, that's great. But then Rodney, he goes down, and Glenn, he said, come on down here to sand dunes, and he started pulling out a, a wheelbarrow, and then another wheelbarrow, and next thing there was pallets, and pallets, and we're up and down to the beach, and I looked at it, it was, you see when the fire got going? Now I work in Belfast, it was something you could see in Sandy Row on the 11th night. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was some fire, I can tell you. I mean, you were toasting marshmallows. You didn't need a stick about that life. <laughs> but it was great. It was a brilliant weekend and great to see the young people again taking part and uh, just singing God's praises. Let's just bow and we were to prayer, please. Lord Jesus, thank you for this evening. Thank you for all that we've heard, all that's been said and done this night. And we just pray now that you'll take even uh, these stammering words. And Lord, I pray that you will use your word, Lord, this night and apply it even to hearts, realizing that you alone know the heart of every man, woman, boy and girl in this gathering tonight. Speak on by the power of thy spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I have a couple of things with me tonight, and there's some boys and girls here. So boys and girls, I have a couple of prizes, and I'm looking for arms folded. Who's got their arms folded? And lips set, because I would like to give these out. And I know you're the best listeners in the place. Look, I have big packets of sweets here, so I'm going to write down now. I'm going to see who's sitting there. there. There's a girl there. What's your name? Lucy. Lucy. You hold on to those, Lucy. There's a whole lot more of those up here, so we'll see who's going to get the rest of them. All right, any bigger people down there sitting good, do you think? Well, we'll see in a wee minute. Well, I've got with me in this bag, boys and girls, of a Belfast Telegraph. So if I put you to sleep, I'll give you a paper. And with something else here as well. I wonder what this is all about. Well, I'm going to tell you in a wee second what this is all about. You know, we were reading tonight, I thank the young people for reading, um, in Mark chapter 14 and verses 3 to 9, we read of a lady called Mary. Boys and girls, what do you call the lady? Shout it out after 212. Mary. Mary, exactly right. A lady called Mary, and we can also read about her in, other, in the other Gospels, and we learn a little bit about her, her brother Lazarus, and her sister Martha. But I want us to focus tonight just on the life of Mary just for a few moments as we find this particular story in God's Word in the book of Mark in chapter 14. You know, as I was thinking about tonight, I was thinking, you know, what is it we want to try and do tonight? Well, only the Lord can do this. And we pray as our prayer tonight that you will go away from this meeting challenged by the Lord himself by God's word and remembering it, and even young people are applying it even this week. I trust there'll be something here tonight that you'll take into this week that will bless you, that will help you, and will encourage you. To help us remember, I'm someone that kind of thinks very simply, okay? And if I see an object, well then sometimes it might help me to remember what was been spoken about in the Bible. And someone's going to tell me, what is this? Quickly, who's going to tell me? What is it? A what? A what? Milk. milk? Oh, milk? Okay. Well, it's not milk. But w w what is this? What's this thing you're getting there? What do you think? Shoot it out, boys. Go ahead. A pot? Or what, what do you think? Uh, well, it's a jar. It's a jar. Okay. So I want you, boys and girls, young people, and Everybody else will just call you teenagers, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, I want you to remember just this word jar, okay? So I'm going to set that there. That is the jar, okay? Now, I want us to think of the, the word jar, and it's spelt J-A-R, okay? J-A-R. And those are three letters that I want us to go away with tonight and remembering something about the life of this lady called Mary. The first of all, the first letter is J, and the J reminds me that for Mary, her focus was on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus. So the J reminds me of Jesus, and boys and girls, young people, Mary put Jesus first in her life. Everything else was second. Everything else was less important, and the Lord Jesus was her focus, and she put the Lord Jesus first. In this story, 
men and women, uh, boys and girls, young people tonight, we see the story of, and we read about it in Mark, how Jesus, there he was in a house, and the disciples were there, and they were sitting around. It tells us they were at meat, or they were having a meal. And you can picture the meal being served. And then this girl, this lady Mary comes in. And what does Mary do? Well, she comes in and she has her jar or her box or her whatever you want to call it. But here she has it and she walks in and she walks over to the Lord Jesus. Boys and girls, maybe there's other people in the room and maybe they're nudging. You know, you wouldn't do that in Kilkale. Sure, they wouldn't wouldn't, wouldn't say, here, look over there. Look, look, look. And... Maybe the other disciples are looking over. What's going on? Maybe one's saying, look at her. What's she doing? What's she? Well, what was she doing? She took that jar and she broke the seal, boys and girls and young people, and she began to pour it on the head of the Lord Jesus. She begins to, the other gospels tell us, she begins to pour it on his feet. Now, boys and girls and young people, you can, hear, you can smell the fragrance in the room. You see, in this jar, in this box, there is precious, precious perfume. There's precious ointment in it. The fragrance begins to fill the room. And here is Mary, and she's pouring out her most precious possession, her perfume, and she's pouring it on the Lord Jesus. Why did she do it? Well, Jesus, we can read about earlier, had raised her brother Lazarus from the dead. But most importantly, Mary loved the Lord Jesus as God's only son, and he alone was worthy of all her praise, of all her time and her most precious possessions. In this act of selfless worship, her 100% focus was on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, boys and girls, maybe some of the disciples, they were, well, maybe this would have been a bit like me at times, and I'd be thinking, oh, look at that food. Oh, look, I want a bit of that. Uh-huh. And I want some, I, I, I like that. And maybe if, oh, maybe there's some, I, I, I can look at some, well, look at some, uh, well, look at some of the older adults here, okay, or young adults, whatever you want to call it, and some of them fond of a fish supper. No, look at them. Pastor George wouldn't like a fish supper, I know that. But boys and girls, Maybe as we think about those disciples, they were so focused on maybe on the male, they were so focused on other things that they weren't focused as they should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, she wasn't focused on the male, she wasn't thinking about it. She wasn't thinking about or listening into others' conversations. She wasn't thinking about her own fears or her own future, but on the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. He was the one that first loved Mary, and he is the one that first loved us. Boys and girls, men and women tonight, when our focus is on the Lord Jesus, it affects everything. It affects everything around us. Everything. You know, the fragrance of being with the Lord Jesus and reading his word each day, You know, we can bring his fragrance into every single place that we go. You know, it's easy to go into a room and people see and they say, look at him. He's a face as long as the day and tomorrow. Look, look look, Look at him. He can't even smile. And he says he's a Christian. But you know, someone, boys and girls, that walks in and has been reading God's word in the morning, getting up to read it, others getting up to pray and talk to the Lord and being in his presence, then when you go out to the day, people will notice that you are different because you bring the fragrance of the Lord Jesus with you. Now, when I'm thinking about this J, we think about who was the J, remind us of boys and girls again, who was it? Anyone know? What? Let's see quickly. I would go over to these, these guys here, but I, I don't know. I don't know if they could get it. I think you're smarter. What do, what do you think? Jesus. Jesus. That's that. Well done. The Lord Jesus. So Mary's focus was on the Lord Jesus Christ, and we need to spend time with him. No matter what we seek to do, we need to spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, boys and girls, young people, men and women, you might be laughed at, for spending time with Jesus. If you tell people, maybe in your school, maybe in your university, in your workplace, wherever you're at, 
What did you do at the weekend? Oh, I was down at the tabernacle there. I was up singing. I was up uh, playing guitar. I was, I was taking part in a service. And people might laugh at you. But you know, boys and girls, Mary didn't let that affect her life. And we'll see that in a wee second because there was other people and they weren't too, fo- too happy about what Mary was doing. So that's the J. The next one is... What letter's the next one? I'm trying to think. Oh, I'm not very good. I forget things very quickly. What's the next letter? J. Is it O? No, what is it? That, what, what do you think? A. Can you catch this? What's your name? Andrew. Andrew, good man. You've got your arms folded. You see, if you hadn't got your, ar- if you, if you hadn't got your arms folded, I wouldn't ask you. And you're all sitting really, really well. So the A in the letter and the word jar, the A reminds us that Mary's actions spoke louder than her words. You know, not only did Mark record this in the Gospels, but we read it also of John and Luke, and it was rec- they recorded it, this particular story as well. Not once did any of the writers, did they record that Mary said anything. She didn't say a thing from what we can read in the Bible. Boys, you might be thinking, well, that would be my ideal wife. <laughs> She wouldn't say anything, even when I say something wrong. But I want us to think about something else about Mary on a more serious note. As we think about her, we think about her love, and we think about not only her love, but how she was someone that was very, perhaps we would call today, reserved, someone that was very quiet, that type of person. And you might be that type of person tonight. You might be in here tonight and you might say, well, I couldn't get up at the front. I couldn't even get up the way the children got up and I couldn't sing and I couldn't do all of those things. But you know, I want to encourage you tonight to be reminded of Mary. And you might say you can't speak, but God has given you all and each one of us a work to do. It might be sitting among the children as some of the leaders are doing today in a children's meeting even. It might be helping out in their summer outreach for the church, the Holiday Bible Club, something like that. Maybe it's giving out a track. Maybe it's being simply in church. Maybe it's being at the prayer meeting, young Christian. That is so important. If we don't go to the prayer meeting, then we will miss out. And Mary, she was one that wasn't going to miss out with fellowship with the Lord Jesus. You know, boys and girls, my wife's called Sharon. What's my wife called? Shout it out. Sharon, you're still listening. What's my wife called? Uh, That's better. And she is the opposite of me. I'm a bit of a head case, but she's really sensible. (laughs) So she is. And she's a real gem. And she doesn't like getting up in groups of people, but she loves to go. She goes to a little mother and toddlers, and she will talk to people and talk to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And she loves to talk about the Lord, and she loves to talk one-to-one with people. She is like Mary, perhaps. She is quiet, and I want you to be encouraged this, this evening, even if you're just like that. God has something for you to do. It doesn't matter if you're quiet, or if you're reserved or loud. God has something that he wants you to do for him. You know, God can use us all, And you know, Mary, well, when we think about this quiet lady, we think about Mary, we think about one that lived in a culture that was dominated by men, but Mary's love motivated her to worship in a most courageous and, um, uh, let's say, a very different way. Let me read verse 3. Here we go. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman... Boys and girls, what did you call the woman? Shout it out. Mary. Mary. There came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. Boys and girls, you know what she was doing? Young people, she you know what she was doing? She was surrendering what was precious to her, and she took that seal, or she took that bottle, that jar, and she broke it. And she poured it out in love to the Lord Jesus Christ. That reminds us about the Lord Jesus Christ and how he died on the cross and how his body was broken for us. 
Boys and girls, I wonder, have you ever asked the Lord Jesus to forgive your sin? Young people, maybe you've heard it many, many times. But I wonder, have you ever trusted him? Have you ever asked him to forgive your sin, the one that was broken for us? Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 tells us a little more about God's wonderful love. It tells us that God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, boys and girls, we need to trust the Lord Jesus. God loves us so much that he sent his precious son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on that cross to take the punishment of your sin and for mine. You know, I don't know uh, many people here tonight, but you know, as, as I look down, I just see lots of smiling faces. But you know, God looks down tonight and he looks into the very recesses of your heart and mine. And he either sees someone tonight, not someone that's smiling or not smiling. He, can, he knows all about that. But he sees someone tonight that's either a saved man or woman, young person, boy or girl, or unsaved. And I wonder tonight, as God looks down, what does he say? You know, God commends his love to you this night. You know, perhaps the, the disciples, boys and girls, that were more, more trying to get position uh, with the Lord Jesus. They were enjoying their meal. Um, but Mary, by her actions, she surrendered her all to Jesus Christ. Young person tonight, I wonder, are you have you surrendered your all to the Lord Jesus? He doesn't want just a little bit of your life on a Sunday. He wants your whole life. He wants all of you, and he wants you to give your life to Jesus Christ. You know, we can think of many, many people down through history who have done just that. And what a work they have done for God, not only in Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland, right across the world, God has his people, and God is using people, but he needs you and he needs me to be surrendered to Jesus Christ and to give her all and to say, Lord, here am I, send me and do with me what you want me to do. I'm going to finish off with the very last one. Boys and girls, what's the very last one that we're thinking of? With the J, the A, and what is the last one? Now let's see if I've anything in this bag just left, just to finish off. Let me see. Oh, there's still one or two left. Here we go. Right, the very last one that we're thinking about. Okay. Let's see. Someone different this time. Let's see. Have you answered? The R. There you go. The R. What's your name? Olivia. Olivia. Brilliant, Olivia. That's great. The R. Yes, and the R reminds us that Mary's love would be remembered. Okay, so the first one was J, and the J reminds us of who? Shout it out. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, was her focus. And the next one was the A, which reminds us of action. Okay, her action spoke louder than her words. And finally, she would be remembered. In verse 9, Jesus said her actions would be a memorial, a memorial. In other words, she would be remembered. Even where the gospel would be spoken, she would be part of that gospel narrative. She would be there, boys and girls and young people, and we would hear her story. And that's happened here tonight. And Kilkeel, is not amazing? What God has said would happen, the Lord Jesus said would happen, 2,000 years later, it's being told tonight in Kilkeel. You know, the Lord Jesus, he is an amazing saviour. You know, Mary's remembered for not worrying about what others thought of her faith. She didn't worry what the other disciples said. In fact, some of them said things that weren't so, so nice. When she, boys and girls, would, would pour that oil out, her precious ointment, onto the head of the Lord Jesus, some of them would say, what? Could that not have been sold? That was worth a lot of money. And today's money, it would have been worth thousands of pounds and there was that ointment and she didn't want it to be sold she wanted to go to someone that was more precious to her even than that ointment and boys and girls and young people there will be times when you will be made fun of perhaps it could be in many different ways just for saying you're a Christian in your school but I want to encourage you tonight that and older people as well no matter where you're at or where you go this week, 
Stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed of him. Be like Mary. And she just simply went quietly and she gave her all to Jesus Christ. You know, the Lord says, them that honor me, I will honor. And the Lord will honor you this week for doing those little things. And you know, sometimes it's not always about shouting it out. Sometimes it could be quiet, just like Mary, getting on with your life, dropping a little word here and there, maybe a little gospel track, maybe something so small and so insignificant, but God can take those little things and we remind it that little is much when God is in it. Judas criticized her boys and girls, young people. Judas criticized her for her extravagant and total love that was shown to the Lord Jesus. But you know, Judas, he's remembered tonight as an old critic. He's remembered tonight as a cheat, as someone that was a traitor. But Mary is remembered for her love for the Lord Jesus Christ, for anointing his body as he would go to the cross. And finally, she was remembered for something else. The Lord Jesus said, let her alone. She hath done what she could. Mary chose to spend time in God's presence. She chose to obey him and to surrender her all to Jesus Christ. Her actions were done out of love, not for attention. They were out of the ordinary, perhaps, but most of all, the Bible tells us, boys and girls, that her actions pleased the Lord Jesus. Young men, young women, don't become someone that just goes to church on a Sunday morning, then maybe the odd Sunday night. That's not what following the Lord Jesus is all about. You know, there was, a, there was a man I used to know from Glasgow, and he used to say, he said, there's too many people and they're pew polishers. What he was meaning by that was, you know, it's so easy to fall, to as Christians, to go into a rut, and just to be there at church, up and down the pew every Sunday, go home, back next Sunday, and that is all your Christian life is. But you know, our life should be a living relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what he wants for us. He wants us to be out and out for him. He wants us to live for him. He wants us to speak for him. And he wants to do us to do what we can. There's Sunday school teachers here. There's youth workers here. There's people that are serving the Lord, even in the media, uh, ministry in all sorts of places and you're simply doing what you can and I want to encourage you to keep going and children and young people you keep going for the Lord Jesus Christ and he will honour you and he will be with you I wonder as I hold up this this is the last bit, I'm finished I've got a Belfast Telegraph I'm not going to give it away okay for it's old news but I want us to think about how Mary she was remembered. Then going to give a prize. Who's got their arms folded, boys and girls? Are you ready? Uh-huh. Aye. I'll give that in a wee second. Because look, I have a picture in this paper. It's only about a couple of weeks old. And there's a picture here on it of someone that was remembered. She only passed away a few weeks ago. She was 33 years of age. She was a school teacher. Loved by her pupils passed away into God's eternity. But I want you to read out just this little article that was written about her in the Belfast Telegraph. Her name was Jill, and I was at her funeral just a few weeks ago. Here's what even the newspaper said about her. A committed Christian, Jill sought at all times to live a life consistent with the faith she professed. As her illness gained dominance and her body weakened, her faith shone even brighter. She is remembered for her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if that had been you this week, dear friend, what would they be writing about you? Would they say there was someone that lived for business? There was someone that lived for pleasure? There was someone that lived for themselves? Or would they say there was someone that lived for Jesus Christ, that lived out their faith, you know, that's what it's about, isn't it? If you're not saved tonight, what would they write about you? Someone. You know, God, he tells us what 
will happen to those that are unsaved, that they'll go out into a lost eternity into hell forever and ever and ever. But tonight God commendeth his love toward you and that while you're yet sinners, Christ died for you. God loves you and God wants you to be with himself and he wants you to be remembered as someone that stood for Jesus Christ and that followed him all the days of their lives. Up on the screen are the three things that we talked about tonight. Jesus was Mary's focus. She focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. She spent time with him. Her actions spoke louder than her words, and she's remembered for doing what she could. As you serve the Lord tonight, you keep going. You be encouraged. And boys and girls, tell others in your school, if you're saved about the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're not saved, why not trust him tonight? And ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you and to come into your life and to save you. And he will do just that. And you can be someone like Bill Woods that we heard about this morning and other people here serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to give this to you. Oh, it's so hard. Oh, everybody's folding their arms now. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it. You see that girl there? What, what's your name? Faith. Oh, I have a faith at home as well. All right. You ready? Can you catch there you go. Oh, she's a good catch too. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much. Boys and girls, thank you very much and thank you for having me this evening. God bless.